The 10.6 update was released on December 6th, 2023. And I'll be breaking down everything added in this update. Let's first talk about the round pool. Solos currently has 54 maps and all of them are core rounds or maps made in Unity. In the 10.5 update or the tool up update, Neotonic removed all the creator made rounds from Solos due to a bug where maps are made in Fall Guys Creative were failing to download. There were 20 maps made in Fall Guys Creative that got added to Solos. They did add some maps from the Rainbow Rally LTM back in the 10.3 or the Summer Breeze update. Update, 10 maps from that LTM got added to solos, but that's besides the point. Mutana did say they would add them back, but it seems like they haven't done so yet. And I wouldn't be surprised if they just don't. And let's be honest, most people are happy that they're gone from solos, me included. Duos has 52 maps, and finally Squads has 58 maps. The Power Party update, aka the 10.6 update, is the first monthly update and where Mutonic didn't unvault or add a single core map back into the game. However, they did vault one map, that being Seesaw, due to a bug and where the Seesaw were just really buggy and super sensitive and most couldn't qualify due to it being easily tipped over preventing most of the lobby from getting on it and qualifying. Seesaw has been removed from the vault show which houses every core map in the game including vault and maps. This means Seesaw has been completely removed from the game. It joins Cosmic Highway and Space Race in that regard. We currently have 19 core rounds sitting in the vault. Well 18 if you don't consider Pixel Painter's finale to be a separate map but it seems that the wiki and Fall Guys DB do so let's say 19. On the 7th of December, Classic Knockout, which is a limited time mode containing quote, all of the original rounds, end quote, which is misleading since it doesn't. It basically features the maps from Legacy Season 1. And what's strange about this instance of Classic Knockout is that it included Hoopsie Daisy, even though the map isn't in solos. The last time a map was in an LTM but not a core mode was back in Season 2 Salad Scramble or SS2, which was over a year ago. In Season 3 Sucking Secrets or SS3 made it to where if a map was vaulted, LTMs featuring that particular map wouldn't appear in the game unless they removed it of course but for the most part entire LTMs have been shelved due to one map being vaulted. Roll Call is an example. Roll On is vaulted and has been since March 7th 2023 or 9 months ago. What's even weirder is that Tiltag is in solos but not in class knockout. With Hoopsie Daisy being in class knockout you'd think they would have unvaulted the map but they didn't. Some people have speculated that they might unvault it but I'm recording this video nearly 3 weeks into the update and they haven't done so yet. I wouldn't be surprised to see Hoopsie Daisy, Egg Scramble and Egg Siege get unvaulted in the next update. What will never get vaulted is my love for Sharp Term Dot Store. My first merch collection, the Wavy Collection, is cool and awesome and so skibbity, stentric, and Ohio to the max. Use Tor 20 for 20% 20 off your purchase. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> Let's quickly talk about the Winter Blunderland Fame Pass or Fame Pass 7 as I'll be referring it to for the remainder of this video. And the reason why I'm calling it Fame Pass 7 is because it's the 7th Fame Pass that's released. Fame Pass 7 came out on December 12th, so 6 days after the 10.6 update, which brings us back to the Fame Pass releasing later than the update. I suppose it makes sense since it's a Christmas themed pass, but I don't see why they couldn't have released it on the 6th since I think December entirely itself is considered like a Christmas month I suppose. I don't celebrate Christmas. So so maybe the second week is when the holiday season really starts to kick in, I'm not sure. The pass is 162 years long which is something I'm just not a fan of due to the fact that you have to get on the game almost daily in order to have a chance of completing it and even if you do, you'll be relying on double fame in order to complete the pass and I just feel like it's just a chore to complete the fame pass. I had 6 days left when I finished fame pass 6. Although Minotaur did add some stuff to the challenge board which I'll be talking about in a different section. When the pass came out, when previewing the Great Skate celebration, you couldn't hear the audio not in the celebrations page or the fame pass. They eventually did fix this in the 10.6.1 update The Cozy Coco skin is a full skin that you can unlock for free, it being in tier 33 and 35 respectively. After tier 40, you can unlock alternative versions of full skins featured in the Fame Pass, and the Llama Charmer and Koala Knitwear are the only skins to have one alternative costume, whereas the other full skins have two of them. Alright folks, let's talk about some bugs, eh? This section will cover bugs I was able to find, and I'll be talking about bugs I found thanks to this update, and some that are still here from older updates. The one that everyone's talking about is the qualification elimination and winner banners are all misaligned. You can especially tell with the winner as a crown is literally touching the text. Here's a before and after for you to compare. The elimination one is really apparent as well. It's larger and it's almost coming off the banner itself. Squads and duels aren't safe from this either. When you qualify, it shows how many points you were brought in and that's misaligned as well. It was centered before but now it's not. The squad position number at the top of the screen isn't centered either. When spectating, the label is much lower and is fully blocking the Wi-Fi symbol. The black bar 
arc between the glyphs for report and rotate is much longer than it was in previous updates and it's blocking some of the text on the label. In the 10.6 update, they added the text for reporting to the black bar, whereas only the text for rotate was on it, which could be why the bar is much longer, hence it overlapping with the label text. A bug that's here from an older update is the views name text is overlapping with the fall feed. This has been here since the 10.4 or the fall force update. When you go to find a match, the lobby music, aka everybody falls, will still be playing even though we're in a game. It then cuts and switches to the song used for when you're in the map loading screen. It doesn't matter what show you join, it will always do this. And even though they did release a bug fix update, which is the 10.6.1 update, it still does this. When the Power Party update came out on the 6th, everyone's nickname would be Glizzy Gang. No matter what mode or show you were playing, this would be the only nickname you would see when spectating someone, or even doing a celebration screen. Then a few days later, I'm not sure exactly the day this happened, everyone would have the Penguin Pursuer nickname. What's funny is that this nickname is from the Winter Blunderlight Fame Pass, or Fame Pass 7, which wasn't even out when this happened. Like the Glizzy Gang, bug, you couldn't escape it. The nickname was everywhere. It seems like for a brief moment, we were all united in pursuing penguins. But like all things, it must come to an end because they would eventually fix the bug and I believe it took them like three weeks to do so. I'll be talking about the discover tab in a separate section, so I'll keep this brief. In the challenge board, under the discover tab, sometimes the challenges won't get tracked properly. In this example, once I'm done with the game, it jumps from seven to nine. And shortly after this, I decide to play one more game and the number stayed at nine, even though it should have gone to 10 and marked the challenge as complete. While on the topic of challenges, I will complete all of them by playing the rounds featured in the discovery tab. And in this example, I'm showing I finished all my challenges, however I'm still at tier 17. So I decided to restart my game by changing it into a different language that refreshes everything without me having to close the game. It's much faster too. It didn't update the fame pass, however once I went back to English, the pass was updated. I assume this happens if you complete the challenges by only playing shows found in the discovery tab. This bug is an old one, but sometimes when I'm loading into a creator made round, it'll just kick me back to the lobby screen. This is quite rare and has only happened to me once this update. In one of my breakdown videos, I showed a clip of someone resetting the key binds and the navigation bar will show double icons. This is if you're using a mouse and keyboard. I went to reset my controller key binds and sure enough, the navigation bar shows double icons as you can see. I have no idea if you reset your key binds with a controller in the 10.5 update if this would happen, but I can confirm that in the 10.6 update, at least on the PC port, if you try to reset your key binds, you will see double glyphs or double icons. And while on the topic of keybinds, Neotonic released their first power up, that being the bean ball. You can grab it by going over to the power up spawner. The thing with the power up is that by default, it isn't assigned to anything, meaning even if you get the power up, you can't use it. In this clip, you can see me go to settings and try to bind it to something, but it wouldn't let me. I kept trying and trying, but it just wouldn't work. After the game was over, I was finally able to bind it to the circle button. This bug has been happening to me for about a month now, so near the end of the tempo 5 update, even though I'm using a PS4 controller, it shows me Xbox icons. I play on the Steam version of Fall Guys, so I'm not sure if this happens on the Epic Games version. And as you can see, it glitches between PlayStation and Xbox icons. This happens to me while I'm playing a game as well, or just when I'm in the main menu, or just anywhere in the game. One time when I was playing Pipe Dream, I landed on the 360 seesaw and it launched me upwards. I just got catapulted upwards. And in one game of Full Tilt, the seesaws were acting really weird. Like most of the games I was playing, it was just fine, but in this one particular one, it was just really odd. And it just seems like the 360 seesaws have been affected as well and not just the regular ones. I'll assume this is a bug, but the keybind for skip test is gone, both in keyboard and mouse and for controller. Although you can still skip the test in Fall Guys Creative, you just can't change it to a different button. Unfortunately, the bug in where your game crashes if you stop the search for a show is still here. This has happened to me on accident four times. Basically, if you start the search for a show, then quickly exit, your game will crash. When publishing a test level I made, it gave me a connection error saying there was a problem uploading the thumbnail, but the level will still be published either way, and shows the error code being 404. While on Fall Guys Creative, the push boxes are missing its textures. I'll be talking about what they added in creative mode in a later section. On December 20th, Mutronic released a live event called Season Zedings, and the preview for the Snow Angel emote is bugged. Just like how the Peekaboo emote was in the following With Me live event, it doesn't show the emote. However, it does preview it if you're in the locker. It just doesn't work when you're previewing it in the live event page itself. Speaking of the live event, if you try to complete 
through the challenges by playing shows only found in the Discovery tab, it doesn't count. At least that's what I thought at first. However, upon finishing a game of solos, the games I played counted, so it seems like the game doesn't track the matches played from the Discovery tab all that well. Since it's currently in beta, that's understandable, but it does track the games, you just need to refresh it basically. I just found this bug recently and it's to do with previewing the tubular transport celebration. And once I was done previewing it, I went back to the home screen and the lighting on the plinth changed to the one found in the celebration and honestly it was really cool actually. I went back and previewed the celebration again and the lighting went back to normal. In the discovery tab, in the hard round section, it'll sometimes show 7 maps, however it'll then show 3 more maps making it a total of 10. I'll assume it only showing 7 is a bug and 10 is the actual amount of maps that should be present. In the discovery tab, if you select the scroll bar and move up or down, you won't be able to select most of the maps. This isn't a new bug and it's something I showed off in my 10.5 video and it's been here since the Fall Force aka the 10.4 update. When scrolling through the maps, it'll just jump forward a few maps seemingly at random. As you can see here, it skips over a few maps but sometimes it doesn't. And as previously mentioned, since the discovery tab isn't beta, bugs are guaranteed to be present. Future Z here and a bug that I forgot to mention is that the pushbox fan and the power up spawner actually have the text for link in the black bar. However, when you try and link it with a button or a pressure plate, you aren't able to. As you can see here, I'm trying to actually link the pushbox fan with a button but isn't letting me. If you go into the canon setting, you can see a toggle for on and off. That means you should be able to link it with a button or a pressure plate but you can't. But unlike the canon, the pushbox and the power up spawner don't have a setting that indicates that it can be a linkable object. I guess for a pushbox fan, it does make sense because it is a fan and the actual normal blizzard fan can be linked. But the power up spawner being a linkable object would be really interesting actually. I could imagine that you could use the button to actually dispense or to activate the power up spawner itself. I do think both objects having the link text in the black bar is a bug but I would really like to see the power up spawner actually be a linkable object because I do think it would be really interesting. Let's talk about the bugs that you guys found. I made a community post asking you guys to comment any bugs you found in the 10.6.0 update along with any changes you noticed as well. At Gmano QI5HV says that in the downtown rush and ballpark, the power up spawners aren't spawning the balls for about 5 seconds while on the other ports it was working as intended and they found this while playing on the switch port. I found a similar comment made by adjoki1239 that basically said the same thing. The switch port doesn't spawn the bean ball power up right away whereas the other ports get it instantly. With this bug, it basically made downtown rush a finale in the bounty time LTM impossible for switch players. According to this comment made by adbogonelli, creative mode has made some changes to older levels such as the positioning and scaling of some scalable objects and objects with the cannon being moved upwards. I will say the objects being moved upwards isn't a new bug and I've had this happen to me in old updates as far as back as the 10.2 update and maybe even before that. They also mentioned how when going to save a level, the game softlocks forcing you to reopen Fall Guys. At Slam Clam Timer left an absolute banger of a comment. I'll talk about the notable ones. They mentioned this bug that was found by Matt Zabals, who by the way makes some phenomenal maps in Fall Guys Creative. I'll link their channel below so check them out. Anyways, back to the comment. It says the following, quote, when you go up a vertical conveyor in ball form and change back to normal, you can keep bouncing on a normal floor like the entire thing was the conveyor floor. When you turn into a ball again, you can keep bouncing higher and higher until a height barrier. This still works even if you fall off and respawn, end quote. I've also seen at Yakob9996 mention something similar as well, and similar with at XXDonald is a cool XX. Slam Climb Tire mentioned how people were clipping through the seesaw and how they're more sensitive than usual, which is putting it lightly. Here you can see people not being able to cross off for a seesaw due to how high up it is and it's just not going back down. Some people were able to qualify but most of the lobby couldn't which is why the map got vaulted. Clouds that were set to large in previous updates have been scaled up to the max, that being 10 which made some creator main runs unplayable. At Matty Ginnon Peach mentioned how people weren't able to slide down when coming out of the wormhole in Puzzle Path. When you exit the portal and try to dive, you just end up ragdolling. And this isn't only true in Puzzle Path. I've played creator main rounds and where if I have a lot of speed and then I try to dive onto the slime floor, I just ragdoll. This also happened to me in Track Attack near the end as well. This cost me a perfect run too. At Daniels Gaming left this comment, quote, I found a bug when I was using the power up and went on a fan going up. I started getting blown to the side for no reason. When I respawned, it kept happening and it made it impossible to qualify, end quote. At Cosmos Stickville mentions how if you have a power up, as soon as you get blown by a pushbox fan, you'll start flying for the rest of the round. And they also mentioned how if you scale a cloud to 10, you can't place it down. At Uno underscore reverse underscore card says, quote, if you change the drawbridge's 
size to large or normal, it unknowingly resets the settings for how long or short the drawbridge will stay opened or closed. End quote. I tried this and was able to replicate it, albeit during the 10.6.0 update. I'm not sure this is a thing since they released a hotfix. But yes, it was a thing, and I did try this in the original theme, but I didn't try it on the digital theme. At Honeybee3483 says how in Volleyfall Final, in duos, it can have three squads, giving one of the squads an instant win. Volleyfall is supposed to only have two squads, and this isn't the first time Volleyfall will have a bug where it gives a team an instant win. Now, I'm not sure this is a bug or not, but it feels like one. People have mentioned how there seems to be a one second delay when it comes to grabbing blast balls and penguins. I did see someone say that it's not a bug and it could be to stop people from flinging themselves with cubes. Basically, there was a whole thing where if you actually dove with a cube in your hand, you would just get flung forwards. And people have been able to cheese certain maps like the following trial, for example, and also been able to cheese some maps where like you had to use a cube to stack something up and actually get to the finish line that way. This makes the penguin maps a lot more annoying since you can grab them right away and they constantly move as well. I'm sure I missed something, so if I did, leave a comment below and let me know. Let's discuss some of the changes made to Fall Guys Creative. Four things got added, those being the quarter pipe, the drawbridge, the power-up spawner, and the first power-up, that being the bean ball. They would introduce object scaling, which allows you to change the parameters of some objects such as the length, height, depth, and scale, which allows you to change all three of them at the same time. Currently, you cannot scale everything, but first, let's talk about the rest of the changes. When you try to overlap an object to something that isn't overlap compatible, it'll now show this icon, which is a nice little change in my opinion. However, if you can't overlap something, the icon will not appear, it just appears if an object cannot be overlapped. And they also allowed us to overlap the checkpoint. This was something I asked for in my 10.5.0 update breakdown video. It's a huge bummer that the start, checkpoint, and finish line can't be overlapped. I loved when creators would hide them in like in Cheese Canyon, for example, where the slam slide was on the checkpoint in El Hermosa. Stuff like that is really cool in my opinion. I hope in the future they make the checkpoint an overlap object at least. And I'm really glad it's here. I was testing this out and you can't completely hide it as it won't work. However, if you have a tiny bit of a sticking out, it'll work. Now, let's hope they make the start and finish line overlap compatible in the next update. Mutonic also added one new soundtrack to creative mode, that being Chill Your Beans. What's weird about this update is that the trench is scalable, but only in the digital theme. You can't scale it in the classic theme for some reason. Also, when the update came out on the 6th, you weren't able to overlap the drawbridge in the digital theme, but you could in the classic theme. This has been fixed, so you can overlap the bridge in both themes. But at one point, you couldn't. While on the topic of things that you couldn't overlap at first, when the 10.6 update came out, you couldn't overlap the power-up spawner. However, a few days later, you were able to do so. I actually learned something really cool about the power-up spawner. This comment left by Adbit Tally says, quote, if you place power up spawner upside down, the bean on the power up spawner will not be upside down, end quote. Here you can see me actually rotating the power up spawner and you can see what I mean. And what's really interesting, if you actually rotate it all the way, you can actually just kind of collect the power up spawner just by walking forwards. You don't actually have to touch the power up itself. And this could lead to a lot of cool decoration possibilities and stuff. It is, it's really cool. And I actually didn't think they would actually go the extra mile with the power up spawner because you think, oh, you know, if you rotate upside down, it'll be upside down. Down, but it isn't, and I think that is a really cool detail. Apologies for getting off topic there. In the classic theme, 19 objects can be scaled, those being the bowl platform, slow barrier, cliff platform, circular platform, quarter pipe, padded block, basic diamond, padded semicircle, bumper block, padded pillar, regular pillar, padded beam, padded mound, speed bump, flag, sign, rainbow, arch, and cloud. In the digital theme, it's all the ones previously mentioned, but the trench can be scaled. Scaled. So 19 objects in classic and 20 in digital. The bean ball is the first power up and the first new mechanic to be added to the game since slide diving back in season 3 Saga Secrets or SS3 and that season is over a year old now. This is only exclusive to creative since you need the power up spawner in order to get it. You can adjust a variety of things such as how long the power up lasts for, how many times you can use it, how many times it respawns and how fast it spawns back. You can also change the type of power up that appears but since there's only one it defaults to that. What's 
really funny about the bean ball power up is that you can grab someone while they're rolling. However, it's not something you have to worry about as you can break free fairly easily by jumping. And you basically need to let the other guy grab you as I'm showing here. And I'll be honest, I didn't know this was a thing until I read this comment and I was just dying laughing. Just I was laughing so hard when I found out you could grab others who are in ball form. Thanks to this guy for letting me grab them over and over again just so I could get footage for this. I also let them grab me a few times as well. Moments like this make me truly love the game. With this update, you can now upload thumbnails. To do this, you first have to save and whatever is in the preview image in the creator menu will be the thumbnail for your creator made map. Then start a play test and qualify and it should say published and once you go to the load page for your maps, it should show the thumbnail. If you have a map that's published before the 10.6 update, you'll see that it doesn't have a thumbnail just like I'm showing right now. But once I went and tested all 10 of my maps, you can see they all have thumbnails. However, it doesn't show them in custom lobbies. I'm not sure if that's intentional or not. The push ramps are missing its texture. It doesn't matter if it's the first or second, they both have been affected by this bug. I also decided to test out the seesaw object and it's definitely a lot more more sensitive than it was in previous updates. Unfortunately, I didn't play the core modes when the update came out as I was playing the Bouncy Time LTM and I was also in Fall Guys Creative as well. And also I decided to take a few days off from the game and by the time I actually got back into the game, they removed Seesaw. Mutronic also released a roadmap for early 2024 and it could potentially be survival mode. Currently we only have rays, so I genuinely cannot wait for survival to come out. With the power spawner, I hope they add the wall jump ability they showed in the Creative Construction broadcast. They also showed of early footage or like actually dev builds of the roll ability and that got added so I hope they add the wall jump ability next. The object physics tool is what I'm excited about and really curious about actually. Personally I could see it being something that allows you to customize how bouncy something is for example but I could see it being used in a whole host of ways. As previously mentioned the key bind for skip test is gone but you can still skip them weirdly enough. Let me know if I missed something but let's move on to the discovery tab now. On December 15th Minotonic unveiled the discovery tab. It can be found in the show selected and it contains around 100 plus maps made in Fall Guys Creative. It's also a mixture of being made mostly by the player base. Weirdly enough, some of Mutonic's maps are actually featured in some sections of the Discovery tab. Currently, this is in beta, meaning it's not final and can have bugs as it's still in active development or really early development actually. I'm really happy Mutonic decided to release this even if it's in beta. The last time they released something that was in beta was Custom Lobbies and this was only exclusive to streamers if I recall correctly. The beta was in Legacy Season 3 or maybe the 3.5 update actually, which was years ago. When the 10.6 update came out, the discovery tab was briefly added to the game. However, it got quickly removed. Here you can see a screenshot and the tab is on the left side, whereas now it's in the middle. Since the discovery tab is in beta, Mutronic will be making a ton of changes to it and probably really fast, so I won't be able to detail them that much to do how quickly they're just changing things. When the tab came out, it had five rows, those being daily trending, weekly trending, newer rounds, hard rounds, and recent hits. These runs can either be played by yourself or with a party. Just like if you were in custom lobbies essentially. As of the recording of this video, the weekly trending contains 26 rounds, daily contains 24 rounds, newer has 30, hard rounds has 10, and finally recent hits has 20. So that comes out to a grand total of 110 maps. However, while making this video, Mutronic released a new row of maps called Chill Rounds and that currently has 4 of them. So making the total 114 rounds featured in the Discovery Beta tab. Future here. While making this video, it seems like Mutonic updated the discovery tab a little. The chill rounds tab now has 10 rounds. Sometimes it'll show 7, but it's 10. And all of them are rounds made by Mutonic. Also, hard rounds only has 2 rounds, which is weird. Those were the big changes I noticed. I wouldn't be surprised if the quantity of maps in the other rows were changed as well. And again, since it's ever changing, I doubt it'll stay this way for long. The amount of maps in some rows were different from when it came out. Daily had 30 maps, weekly had 25. Also, weekly and daily trending both swapped places. Before, daily was at the top, but now it's weekly. I assume how they're able to rotate maps very frequently is that they use an AI or artificial intelligence to do so. Because some of the maps are incredibly basic, and some of them are just there so you can finish your challenges as quickly as possible. Literally, a start and finish line. Some even have a blaster below the start line so you can just go AFK and complete your challenges. Also, I saw two maps are very sexually suggestive. It just quality control is just 
non-existent currently. Let's discuss some of the changes and other stuff I couldn't include in the other sections. On December 20th, Minotonic released a live event called Season's Eatings, and the event gave out 8,000 kudos, which is a lot, something I'm glad Minotonic is doing. I remember when they used to give out only 200 back in Season 1 Free For All. You can just complete the event by going to the Discovery tab, however you might think it isn't tracking. Just go to Customs and just play a game of Extreme Party, either die or qualify and it'll update. You could just restart your game and that'll do the trick as well. The event is very similar to the following with me event. Love how you can either do it with a party or by yourself. And as someone who prefers to play solo, I'm glad you aren't forced to queue up and if you do, it's a lot easier since casual players are more likely to play with their friends. It makes sense why they laid it out like that. It just sucks how the emote preview is bugged but only in the event page. And speaking of the event page, the icon for it is different. Before the 10.4 update, it looked like this. It then got updated along with the other icons. However, it seems to have gone through another change in the Power Party update or the 10.6 update. The challenge board at first didn't receive any changes. However, when the Discover tab came out, the Customs tab changed to the Discover tab. All three challenges and its amount of fame it gave out stayed the same as it did before. However, on the 19th of December, they updated the Discover tab and added two more challenges. One that gives out 4,000 fame upon playing 15 rounds and one that gives out 10,000 fame once you've played 25 rounds. All the fame given out from the Discover tab alone is 17,750. If we divide that by 7,920, which is how much fame we need to level up after tier 10, and that comes out to 2.24. So you basically unlock two tiers just by completing the Discover challenges. The thing is, if you complete the Discover challenges, you also complete the dailies and weeklies as well. Another change is that Minotonic updated the way the number zero looks. They changed it to something called a slashed zero. However, some places such as the challenge board, for example, haven't been updated. So the zeros look the same as it did before. The show box and the kudos counter at the home screen is the same as before. And so was the past progress bar and crown rank. Heck, even the medals haven't even changed. You can see the slash zero while playing a game such as in the map loading screen, the label if you're playing squads or duos. The squad score also shows the slash zero and the timer shows it as well. The store is where the change is really obvious. Every item that has a zero has been updated to the new slash zero format. This change feels really rushed out and I'd argue the entire update does. With the number of bugs, that's to be expected if you're doing one almost every month. Future Z here. One place they added the slash zero I didn't notice till I was editing this video was on the floating screens in some fruit. As you can see here, the zeros are indeed slashed. However, if you look at gameplay before the 10.6 update, it's a normal looking zero. Also, the zeros in perfect match have been changed as well. Okay, future future Izzy here. Remember when I said they didn't update the zero in the current rank page? Well, actually, that isn't true. Well, it kind of is true because there are some zeros on the current rank page that isn't updated. However, if you look at the bottom of the screen, more specifically at the number 50, you can see that the zero does indeed have a slash zero. In Fame Pass 6, aka the Fabulous Feast Fame Pass, on the second tier, there is a pattern called Pizza Party. And as you can see, there's actually a pizza slice in the preview of the pattern. However, I'm rotating my character around as you can see, and there is not a single slice of pizza on the pattern at all. In the 10.6.0 update, aka the Power Party update, they actually changed the preview of the pattern to get rid of the pizza slice. So now the preview and the pattern itself are now the same. Downtown Rush, which was actually a finale in the Bounce Time LTM, was once called Rolling Ball Final. They also updated some of the colors. For example, Plastic Chrome, Baked Beans, and Admirality have lost their shine. I'm sure there are more colors that have been affected. The face plates featured on Fame Pass 5, the place in question being the Glow in the Dark, and Fearsome Fuchsia have changed back how they were in the 10.4 update. Basically, this is a whole charade. In the Tool Up update, or the 10.5 update, they changed those two plates by inverting the colors. However, in the 10.6 update, they reverted the change. So now the plates are back to how they were in the 10.4 update. Let's talk about some bug fixes actually. They managed to fix the bug in where your fall guy would have inverted rotation. So now when you rotate your character, it should go in the intended direction. I'm glad to see it fixed, but I won't lie and say I didn't get used to it. I'll leave the blog post that Mutatic made that actually showcases some of the bug fixes in the description of the video. Some notable ones are, quote, fixed missing collision on obstacles in several legacy rounds, end quote. Not sure what rounds exactly, but that's cool, I guess. I mean, I don't even know if they actually did it because sometimes Mutonic will actually put things in patch notes, but it isn't actually fixed or it's going to be fixed later. Because I remember in my 10.5 update video, I actually included one of the fixes they actually made, which was like they increased the character limit on the creative description from like 140 to 170, I believe. It was something like that. They actually increased the character limit and someone was like, no, they actually didn't actually implement this change, which is really weird because they put it in the patch notes. So people think, oh, okay, this must be something that actually changed, but it isn't, which is really 
weird to me i don't know how to describe it to you i don't know if i've ever read a patch notes that you know says they did something but didn't actually do it i don't know if other games do this do comment below and let me know because honestly i don't even i don't even trust the patch fixes anymore i don't know if i even want to do a section talking about the bug fixes just because of that but i assume it's just a one-off thing well anyways they actually did say something that's really interesting in the bug fixes it's quote fixed creative rounds backgrounds reverting from digital to original theme end quote i think this was the bug that caused mutonic rounds to change from digital to original this was when they introduced the background selector back in the fall force or the 10 before update if i recall correctly i'm not sure this is a bug or not but in the show selector screen the text that indicates what show you selected is larger than it was in the previous updates i have a feeling that this is a bug but i wasn't sure so i decided to not include it in the bug section of the video in the map loading screen they changed the distance between the a and y in the how to play part it's now much closer than it was in the older updates however the map name on the pink bar the map category and metal headline and also the how to play text are all uncentered i know that for a fact that the map name and the map category aren't centered you'll see me flip through a before and after a few times so you can see the changes for yourself however once you see it you cannot unsee it thank you to our max members for your continued support check out shoptorium.store click the subscribe button it's free and supports the channel greatly